Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for part two of the Monday Q and A's. So let's do it. Should one do powerlifting if they genetically have small joints? Well, I've got pretty small wrists myself. They're not super small, but they're fairly small. My other joints are all big. But uh, I hate this myth. This is a, a pervasive myth that, oh, only people who should go into strength sports are people with the really big joints and, and bodybuilders all have small joints unless they want to be the 300 plus pound monsters. And there's some truth to that at the extremes. Now, obviously, you look at someone like uh, guys like Serge Nubray or Arnold Schwarzenegger. They look bigger than someone, way, way bigger than someone else who might have a similar amount of muscle mass purely because they have those little bitty tiny joints. It makes everything look bigger. It's a genetic trait. That's one of the traits of a very aesthetically pleasing physique. Doesn't mean they can't have a lot of strength. I think Serge Nubray was benching over 400 pounds with those little tiny joints. Having big joints, if you want to be way up in the heavyweight classes as a strength athlete, is a tremendous advantage from an injury prevention perspective and even a leverage perspective because your body will let you put on more muscle and get stronger as a result of that. Doesn't mean that you couldn't be a champion, a world champion in the lighter weight classes, though. No, of course not. The majority of people who compete in powerlifting are not at the high weight classes. If you guys go to meet, you're going to find that usually 50% of the field at an average powerlifting meet is underneath the heavyweight classes, meaning they're under the 220 or the 100 kilo. They're, they're underneath that. So someone with small joints would have no trouble being competitive there with enough hard work, uh, proper training, nutrition, assuming they have the genetic potential to be fairly strong. There's no reason they can't compete. It's just silly to think otherwise. I just would recommend that if you have really small joints, don't try to compete up in the way up into the heavyweights or the super heavyweight. It would be a really bad idea. Just for, for those obvious reasons, but there's no reason you couldn't be successful at powerlifting. All right, next question. Please explain fat's role in fat gain. You need a certain amount for optimal hormone production, but anything above this facilitates extra fat gain, right? All right, guys. Um, let me see if I can word this correctly because I've covered this in detail a lot in the past. You need a certain small amount for hormone production. Your body can make the rest of what it needs for hormone production. It's not that critical until you're in a calorie deficit. All right, it just isn't that big of a deal. It's a matter of whatever energy you enjoy consuming, whatever's going to give you the most palatable and satiating diet. There's no hormonal benefits to eating massive amounts of dietary fat. And you're really consuming dietary fat mainly to get your essential fatty acids uh, to get your fat-soluble vitamins. Once that's covered, the rest is minor. The, the hormonal issues you see are generally a result of large calorie deficits rather than fat going too low. But when you combine those two together, that's when you really run into problems. You put someone, a grown man, on 1,800 calories and 30 grams of fat a day, yeah, of course his testosterone levels are going to plummet. But that's, it's not as big of an issue as people make it out to be until you start going into calorie deficits. Now, as far as the fat gain, it is true that the fat you eat is the fat you wear. But if you were to eat enough calories, you will eventually start storing dietary carbs as fat at an appreciable rate. It can happen at a small rate no matter what. So even if you're on a low-fat diet, say 50 grams of fat a day, you're using... 20 grams of that towards essential purposes like essential fats that's still like 30 grams of fat every day that if you're in a calorie surplus you're going to store even on a low fat diet and you're still going to have a small amount a few grams of your carbs are going to get converted every day you're still going to gain body fat on a low fat diet and a calorie surplus it's just that the fat that you are gaining the vast overwhelming majority of it's coming from your dietary fat so bulking on a really high fat diet unless your calorie surplus is very very small is a bad idea for that reason because you're going to store all the excess calories if you're eating a 500 calorie surplus or a thousand calorie surplus and you're eating a thousand calories of fat a day yeah you're going to store 500 calories worth of fat every single day so when calorie surpluses start getting large your dietary fat better go real low unless you want to gain more fat. But it's still an issue of you have to be in a calorie surplus to be gaining fat from it. 
and and that is still the the key point you're not going to gain fat on a high fat diet without a calorie surplus it's the fact your body has surplus energy that lets it store the dietary fat you're eating all right next question is there a particular reason you always seem to recommend weighted chin-ups instead of the pull-ups you know why it's gonna sound funny it's a personal bias mainly because I do not develop my biceps particularly easily there have always been a, a muscle that lags for me in proportion to other things unless I'm very very careful about it and weighted chin-ups put more tension on the biceps than weighted uh, pull-ups do. A better bicep exercise and I find that since the chin-up or the pull-up isn't going to be the only back exercise anyone does I would always have someone doing deadlifts and or rows on top of that. It doesn't matter if the chin-up is giving a fraction less stimulation to the the latissimus dorsi and other muscles of the back. You've got other exercises to help fill in that gap. So I don't consider it quite as big of a deal just for that purpose from a programming perspective. All right, guys, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time in part three.